Hello everybody and welcome back to another Know Your Ship episode and today I'm going to be looking at the Sviedlov class cruisers. The Sviedlov class light cruisers were enlarged post-World War II versions of the Chapayev class ships. They were also known as the Project 68 BIS cruisers. These cruisers were initially planned by Joseph Stalin to form a glorious Soviet Navy and a true blue water fleet. The project was approved on the 27th of May 1947 and the first three ships were named after the cancelled ships of the previous Chapayev class, of which construction had stopped due to the Great Patriotic War. While the initial order appeared to have been for 30 cruisers, it does appear that out of these 30 ships, five of them were actually of the preceding Chapayev class, so only 25 Svetlov cruisers were actually to be built. However, when Joseph Stalin died in 1953, the order for ships was cut down to 21 in 1954, and then finally by the time the first 15 Svedlov class ships were actually laid down, the remaining six ships were suddenly decided to be modified for protection against nuclear, biological, and chemical attacks. But they were never completed, because by 1959, all the new constructions were halted, and all the incomplete ships were scrapped by 1961. There were a total of 14 Sviedlov class ships that were actually completed, and boy, they were big ships. Only the Worcester class cruisers were of pretty comparable tonnage. They displaced 13,600 tons standard and 16,640 tons full load. These ships were 210 meters long overall, had a beam of 22 meters, and a draft of 6.9 meters. And by the way, these ships were really, really long compared to the USS Texas, for example, and the Sviedlovs were 35 meters longer. The Sviedlovs shared the same type of machinery, main armament, and sight protection as the preceding Chapayev class, but had a significantly greater range of 9,000 nautical miles at 18 knots. The Sviedlovs also had much improved underwater protection, consisting of 23 watertight bulkheads, and they also had a double bottom that covered over 75% the length of the ship. These cruisers were fast. Sviedlov on her trials managed 32.69 knots on 114,000 shaft horsepower and 33.04 knots when the engines were pushed to 121,700 shaft horsepower. As originally built, the Sviedlovs were equipped with four triple 152mm 57 caliber Mark V guns, six dual 100mm 70 caliber dual purpose guns, 16 dual 37mm AA guns, and two quintuple 533mm torpedo tubes. The 152mm 70 caliber guns in triple turrets fired a 55kg armor piercing, semi armor piercing, high explosive shrapnel shell, a 54.23kg distance grenade, and a 48.5kg star shell. The arm piercing and semi arm piercing shells had a muzzle velocity of 950 meters per second, while the high explosive round had a muzzle velocity of only 800 meters per second. And of course, this is going to result in a range difference between these two shells. This, of course, resulted in the AP shells having a max range close to like 30,000 meters, while the high explosive could only make it out to about 23,700 meters at around max elevation. The guns will last around 450 rounds before they had to be replaced. The ships carried 180 rounds per gun, and of course, there was a further 18 rounds in each turret. Rate of fire was between 6.5 to 7.5 rounds per minute. Moving on to the dual-purpose guns, the Sviedlovs carried the 100mm 70 caliber dual-purpose gun, and these were mounted on a stabilization mount which would allow the guns to be stabilized between minus 20 and positive 20 degrees, so even if the ship was rolling in the seas, these guns would remain quite stable. The guns could elevate between negative 8 to 85 degrees, and the 100mm guns could fire high explosive, fragmentation, AA, star shell, and even anti-radar shells, which were designed for uh, electronic countermeasures. The fragmentation rounds could reach out to around 24,200 meters at 49 degrees of elevation. The AA shells could reach out about 21,400 meters at an elevation of 30 degrees with a maximum effective ceiling of 52,490 feet or 16,000 meters roughly. Rate of fire was between 15 and 18 rounds a minute. The 37mm AA guns on the Sverlov class cruisers were actually very much comparable to the 40mm Bofors AA guns that were used aplenty on many U.S. Navy warships during World War II. 
And that was mostly because these 37mm guns were basically derived from Bofors designs. The 37mm AA could manage about 320 to 360 rounds uh, per minute rate of fire, met to a max range of 8,400 meters and a maximum ceiling of 5,000 meters. In terms of firepower, the Sverdlov class cruisers would have been superior to pretty much every other nation's uh, light cruisers at long range. However, at medium range, the Sverdlovs likely would have been overwhelmed by the sheer amount of fire that would have been directed at them by ships like the Worcester class uh, in the US Navy with their auto-loading 6-inch guns. The Sverdlovs also had a very comprehensive sensor fit and fire control system. The ships were equipped with radar for air and surface search as well as fire control uh, for all their weapons. The radar suite would continue changing as various ships in the class underwent refits, modernizations, as well as new weapons being put onto these ships. The Sverdlovs had 100mm of sight armor, 50mm of deck armor, 150mm for the conning tower, and 175mm of armor on the turret faces. So far, so good. Uh, the Sverdlovs sound like really, really good ships, but they had their weaknesses. While they were very, very capable of conducting commerce trading operations, could deal with the other light cruisers at the time that were likely to be out hunting them, and they could defend themselves from some aircraft, the rapid advance of technology is what would ultimately make these large, very manpower-hungry ships obsolete. The Royal Navy, for example, seeing the threat from the Sverdlov-class ships, would introduce strike aircraft like the Buccaneer, which when armed with anti-ship missiles could basically attack the Sverdlovs with virtual impunity. The other issue, of course, was the fact that the Sverdlovs, in Stalin's grand plans, was originally designed to operate in a fleet with battleships, battle cruisers, aircraft carriers, and so, of course, the cruiser wouldn't be under that much threat. However, with the death of Stalin, his idea of these big surface fleets sort of died with him, and the next leaders in charge went in a very, very different direction. The Sverdlovs would be the last pure gun-armed cruisers in the Soviet Navy, as the arrival of the Missile Age would rapidly bring about the Soviet Union, equipping their ships with lots and lots and lots of missiles. And while I was sort of searching for information, I've definitely read that even Nikita Khrushchev described these ships as basically being sort of useless. Um, he described his flagship during a state visit to the US in 1959 as good for only state visits and as missile targets. Although, truth be told, I'm not really sure where this quote came from because when I looked up Nikita Khrushchev's state visit in 1959, he arrived in the U.S. Uh, on an airplane, a Tupolev 114, at Andrews Air Force Base and then departed the same way. So, not really sure where the ship came in, but still, that quote does describe the problems faced by these ships. Now, the service history of the Svidlov class cruisers were extremely varied and I can't really cover all of them in one video. So what I think I'll do is just cover the ships that I think had a rather interesting history. And obviously, I'll start with the only remaining ship of this class, the Mikhail Kutasov. She was laid down on the 23rd of February, 1951, completed in December the 30th of 1954. On the 29th of October, 1955, she would assist with rescue efforts when the battleship Novorossiysk uh, the former Italian ship Julio Cesare exploded in Sevastopol. Sometime in 1961, the Mikhail Kutasov uh, was visited by the first man in space, Yuri Gagarin. And during the Six-Day War, the Kutasov would support Egypt by conducting operations in the Mediterranean Sea that would restrict the U.S. Navy. She was modernized to Project 68A, which enlarged the bridge, changed the fire control uh, radars for the 100mm guns, and also replaced some of the twin 37mm gun mounts for eight twin 30mm radar-controlled AA guns. She was relegated to the reserve fleet in April of 1986, but a couple years later, with the breakup of the Soviet Union, and then difficulty, of course, in deciding who sort of gets what between the Ukraine and Russia, the Kutasov sort of just hung around for a while and wasn't scrapped. And so finally, in 2001, she was moved from Sevastopol to Novorossiysk, uh, and then she would become a museum ship on the 28th of July, 2002, where you can see her today. Another Sverdlov-class cruiser with an interesting story and a really, really hard name to pronounce, because I still can't really get it right, is the Ordsonikits was another Project 68 BIS cruiser, uh, and she had a few interesting stories to tell. She was laid down on October 19, 1949, completed August the 18th of 1952. She would take Nikita Khrushchev to England for a state visit in 1956, where, 
MI6 recruited Lionel Crab, also known as Buster Crab, to investigate the new propeller design of this cruiser. Crab donned his gear, jumped into Portsmouth Harbor on the 19th of April 1956, and was never seen by his MI6 controller ever again. The ship would then be modified for warm climate conditions from 1961 to 62, decommissioned from the Soviet Navy, and then set sail for Indonesia, where she was accepted into the Indonesian Navy in 1962 and renamed the Irian. The Irian would be, at for a period of time, the largest warship operated by any Southeast Asian country. And of course, this caused a lot of uh, concern among other Southeast Asian uh, countries, but she was mostly there to contest um, possible Dutch warships. However, by the time the ship was returned to Russia for repairs, uh, Russian technicians and mechanics went onto the ship and found that the ship was in a really, really terrible state. Apparently, in all the years that she had spent in Indonesia, the Indonesians didn't really do any maintenance on her. So she was really, really worn out. Interestingly, some of the rooms on the ship had also been converted uh, into rooms for other purposes. For example, like a prayer room. Of course, something that is unheard of in a communist country uh, at the time. So after the collapse in relations between the USSR and Indonesia, the ship could no longer be maintained. She was decommissioned in 1972 and was scrapped. Another rather famous uh, Project 68 based cruiser was the Murmansk, a ship whose actual service career wasn't really spectacular at all. Although, when she was sold for scrapping in 1994 and en route to the breakers yard, she broke loose during a storm and decided to beach herself in Norway. And then she lay in Norway for quite a long time until finally concerns about environmental damage resulted in the decision to scrap her on the spot. A couple of the Svidlov class cruisers actually got a pretty cool conversion or refit or things like that. The Derzinski, for example, uh, got a pretty cool conversion during her career um, because from 1960 to 1962, her X turret, which is the number three turret on the ship, was removed and a surface to air missile system based on the SA 2 guideline, uh, the flying telephone pole faced by US aviators in Vietnam was put in place of the turret. Of course, it didn't really take long for the designers to go, wait a minute, putting a large, uh, highly explosive missile above the armored deck probably wasn't the greatest idea, not the safest thing to do either. So the Duzinski became the only ship to receive this conversion, and she would actually stay that way until she was decommissioned in 1988. Two of the other Svedlov class cruisers were turned into command cruisers. Uh, one of them, the Zhdanov, had its number three turret removed and replaced by additional command spaces and an SAN-4 SAM missile launcher. The Admiral Senyavin uh, lost both its rear turrets, gained a new mast, carried a new long-range communication antenna, and she also gained a helicopter landing pad for the KA-25. The Svedlov class uh, cruisers would provide pretty valuable service to the Soviet Union, but they were pretty much obsolete the minute they were built. Still, a really, really cool class of ship to study, and the main reason I thought these were really interesting ships is because as you saw the evolution changes in technology, strategy, and sort of you know, tactical thinking, um, these ships would sort of change with them. And so pretty much from conversions from the original all-gun cruiser to missile cruisers to command cruisers to all these things, the Svidlovs pretty much went through all of it and makes her a pretty cool ship uh, in my book. Anyways, folks, hope you enjoyed this episode on the Svidlov class cruisers. And do remember that all Know Your Ship episodes are provided ad-free, and this is made possible by the amazing patrons that are supporting this channel right now. But of course, in particular, a huge shout out to all the Ruby and Diamond tier supporters. Um, thank you so much for your support, and of course, uh, your votes decided on what ships I would do this episode on. Anyways, everybody, have a fantastic week, and I'm looking forward to talking to all of you again soon.